All right, Jimmy, what do you want to be when you're older? An, an astronaut. Okay, that's good. That's great. What about you, Stephen? What do you want to do? Uh, I want to be a doctor. All right, and finally, Sergio Ramos Maldini Jones. we got to stop naming these kids after footballers, man. What would you like to be when you're older? Well, miss, I want to break some f***ing legs, pal. Sergio, you are seven. Who's even been teaching you these words? Oh, I didn't want to have to do this, Sergio, but I'm afraid it's a detention. Oh, God. Yo, guys, it is your boy Niran here, and you are watching FTW. This is, of course, the series where I bring to you the best and more frequently the worst of what football has to offer during the last seven days. But what's been kicking off in the world this week? Well, a new strain of swine flu coming from a pig has been found in a human body in the UK this week. See, I knew getting David Cameron back was going to be a bad idea. The guy who ate a bat is going to see COVID-2 drop in this winter, and he's going to be fuming. He copy my whole fucking flow. Oh, word for shit. word, bar for bar. You know what? lads i'm realizing i ate a bacon sandwich approximately three weeks ago and it could be game over for me <laughs> So top scorers this, what have we got here? Return of masks, sitting indoors, and clapping for Nurse Janine on a Thursday. Ah! Where am I? What was that? Nah, I'm kidding. We obviously won't get that far. But what I will say is one FTW fan favorite has been doing a different type of clapping. We out here playing Monopoly. Yeah. I want to kiss my mom properly. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> what? <Don't laughs> <worry. laughs> Neymar is back in trouble again, lads. I'm not gonna lie. After being caught messaging an OnlyFans model rather than the mother of his child, FNG Enterprises Corporation Business Partners Limited were delighted hearing this news. <laughs> Meanwhile, my landlord's in for a pleasant shock seeing that I'm actually paying my rent this month. Unsurprisingly, after the exposing of these messages, his new partner plans to break up with a former Barca and PSG star over this. And as I'm sure many of you can tell by the videos that have ended up on this channel, this is a bit of a recurring theme. Man, the first time was so nice, I had to do it 367 times. It's not gonna get any easier for Neymar when he attends his third ex-wife's wedding. His Spotify raps looking very different indeed, I'm not gonna lie. And this isn't the only girl he's been a fan of, truthfully. His friends are pleading with him not to message a girl with a link tree in her bio. For me, I can't do it. You can! Oh. I didn't know his sister had a burner account, to be honest with you. This man is one step away from alabama -fying his whole family again. He'll be asking for forgiveness from his sister after sacking her off last year to start a family that doesn't already involve his family. Cheating with one leg to his name, by the way, is absolutely nuts. His social media manager is not going to accept the excuse of him saying that he thought he was messaging his actual girlfriend. Can you tell me who wrote that phrase? I would need to check. It's possible that I wrote that. I'd rather you didn't lie about this. It's highly likely that I wrote that. What percentage likely? Yeah, probably 90% likely that I wrote that. You wrote that, didn't you? Okay, yeah. Well, I can't lie, things are gonna get even more problematic when they go to sign the divorce papers. All right, so how can I help you today? Hey, so obviously I'm divorced now, but are you married? <sighs> I'm starting to understand why this didn't work out for you now, lads. On the pitch now, and we start with Manchester United, who are once again box office for mixed reasons. It started off well with a simple 3-0 win over Everton, which featured the goal of the season winner. Garnacho! Oh, wow! Oh, wow! Alejandro Garnacho pulled off one of the smoothest and most satisfying bicycle kicks the world of football has ever seen, finding the top corner acrobatically just three minutes in. Luke Shaw couldn't believe what he was seeing, and one United fan mid-WhatsApp audio message couldn't quite believe it either. Can't keep referring back to Fergie though, John. That was years and years ago by now. We have to just live with it and hope for the best, that's all, but... One goal! I don't know about you, but if I tried this technique, it's ending in absolute disaster for everybody in the local area. The only reason he's tried this himself is because he's looked up and seen Jordan Pickford's arms. Young kids across the country are inspired and Manchester United fans love Alejandro and led to this wholesome video of a young United fan getting Garnacho's boots. This is my present, my gift. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, he's gonna cry. Other Red Devil supporters were a little bit distracted though at Goodison Park, filming Roy Keane instead, who was trying to get them to focus on the action rather than the Sky Studio. Himself and Mika Richards are gonna be out on our mission, finding this fan after three minutes of POV cam. Marcus Rushford was seen leaving a restaurant that he'd rented out entirely with his partner this week. Hang on a second, this guy's not a United fan after all. United needed a similar result 
result to keep their Champions League hopes in their own hands. But unfortunately, Andre Anana couldn't keep the ball in his, as they drew 3-3 with Galatasaray in a European Classic. It leaves them still bottom and needing to beat Bayern on the final day, and the signs were looking bad going into the game, with heavy rain striking the Turkish stadium and leaving Andre Anana struggling trying to come off his line and claim the ball. Oh my god! Speaking of Anana, and the Champions League version was back again. His rating suggests that it was probably a stinker. He was wrong footed for Hakim Ziyech's first free kick, then palmed the second one into his own net. The guy was feeling very welcoming to his own goal. Anytime the Moroccan step forward, this man actually falls apart. Anytime there's any level of pressure on his net in the Champions League. One publication questioned whether he was starting to find his feet. It'd probably be quite helpful if he found his hands as well. This brother couldn't catch feelings, mate. He plays like he's wearing oven gloves. Honestly, he has single-handedly, no, zero-handedly cost them. They've now conceded the most goals in the entire competition at 14. 14? You know you can't be prosecuted for that? And with Celtic in this team, that's actually impressive. Oh, jeezy pips, man. United fans are still happy with the Cameroonian when he concedes his 47th of the month, but he was honest in an interview. Meanwhile, Aaron Wambasaka is just scarred, putting his life on the line repeatedly, only to see it go in the back of his net anyway. Though Andre clearly isn't going to let any of the talk on social media from United Era Origin 47 underscore get to him. Only take the critic from the coaches. For the rest, they yeah. can sing, they can cry. I don't give shit. The thing is though, Andre, I am your coach and you are shit. The Galatasaray had a TIFO for United upon entrance to their ground saying, welcome to hell. They don't need a welcome. They were already there. Garnacho did open a scoring here for United before it all went wrong. Is he the real deal? He's certainly stepping up at the moment. And we did try and calm the Turkish fans down again. Look, it didn't work for you the first time, Alejandro, and it didn't work this time. Bruno Fernandes, though, undoubtedly scored a screamer, with Galatasaray's third just as great. But the moral of the story is United simply can't defend. Elsewhere in the Champions League, and Newcastle felt heartbreak after a harsh penalty decision that saw them draw with league earned champions PSG. I'm genuinely not scared at what all. What are they going to do with that? It's 1-0. We've won 1-0. Oh, my. Through. The ball deflected off Tino Liveramento's chest, then his arm. But because of UEFA law, if an arm is even in the same room as a football, it's a handball. Yeah, so honestly, I think I'm probably going to get this one. Yeah, nah, mate, you got to go. Sorry about that one. It's a penalty. UEFA have blood on their hands for ruining football. I mean, they'd give that as a penalty probably as well. VAR officials were ready to negotiate in millions how many they wanted off PSG for a favourable decision. Over a billion, 200, a trillion, 200 billion. Eddie Howe understandably was absolutely disgusted at full time. This sort of decision wouldn't have been given in the Prem. Actually, that's a lie. It probably would have done. One Newcastle fan even called into TalkSport and said he had to switch off his Christmas lights after the result. This is ruining Christmas, lads. Alan Shearer wasn't too pleased, though I can't lie, his reaction was slightly different to that of the one that benefited his side against Arsenal in the Prem. Though he did have some strong words for Gunners fans calling him out on Twitter. It's obviously an Arsenal fan. Bit bitter. Sunderland fans are going to be feeling good walking into work this week. Mbappé, 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 da. Kill it, kill it, kill it, kill it. Before the game, though, and PSG Ultra scrapped with Newcastle fans. I don't know about you lot, but I think scrapping before a game is nuts. Man, you don't even know what you're fighting over yet. You're fucking shit. But are we? I don't know. The game hasn't happened yet. Oh, yeah, true, true. <coughs> God, that show's goal was all right, innit? Yeah, it? nah, mate, it was decent. The start of the game was also a nice opportunity to see Sergio Rico back at the Parc de France. Kylian Mbappe was feeling inspired, trying the Alejandro Garnacho special, but in the end, pulled off a tricycle kick. To be fair, the stats were very much in PSG's favour. They deserved something out of the game, but this was still a robbery in terms of officiating, and the current UEFA handball rule needs to be scrapped. Real Madrid beat Napoli in a six-goal thriller. Drew Bellingham scored again in this one and went to thank the Real Madrid fans. So Tony Crow shut him down before he could put one arm up. The German taking extra precautions not to see anything crazy there. Here we have Jude claiming the Real Player of the Year award in November. And in contrast there, Spotify rap is starting to make a whole lot of sense now too. Youngster Nico Paz, Paz, I think, scored the winning goal here. Or at least the goal that made it 3-2. And his family were celebrating in the crowd. Spanish clubs are just running out of players at the moment. So they're having to just spawn new ones everywhere. Meanwhile, Josselu scored in this one, but still 
still apologise to his own fans. I can only imagine for having to watch him play. Arsenal battered French side Lons with a 6-0 victory at the Emirates. It, honestly, their defence needed some Lons as in. They conceded four in about 12 minutes. The French side's manager was not too pleased at full time with his players. Frustrating afternoon. Give us your thoughts on that display. That weren't frustrating. We were crap. First half, pathetic. Bunch of losers. Meanwhile, Arsenal players were taking turns on mugging off Brice Samba in the Lons goal. About Uber Eats League on. These lot are on Uber Eats because they've been munched here. It might be a farmer's league, but they've not even got a job on the farm. The cattle, they wouldn't make it. Man City came back from 2-0 down at half time to beat RB Leipzig 3-2. Pep Guardiola sat forward in the second half. Once this man has had his water bottle hydration, he's a totally different manager. He'll still have high praise for his opposition after beating them for a seventh time in a row. Honestly, the best team in world football. They're just like so energized with that Red Bull. And all of that after Loy's appender shushed the Man City faithful. I wonder where he got that from. Well, it was probably Man City and Liverpool's top of the table clash over the weekend, which ended with a point shared in a 1-1 draw. Erling Haaland hit his 50th Premier League goal in like the space of 35 minutes. Meanwhile, at the other end though, and Liverpool players were trying to assist Darwin Nunez in getting a goal unsuccessfully. Someone said that Jeremy Doku plays like he's got the compilation music or already in his head and I can't think of anything more accurate. Hey, I'm fucking sick. It seemed like he was terrorizing us at first. This is what Trent saw when Doku approached him in the final third. But the Liverpool right back would get his revenge, grabbing the equaliser and shushing the Man City fans, getting a fiery response from those supporters. Some very strong middle fingers here, I've got to say. Pause. A couple going for the double approach here. But I've got to say, this kid is about eight. It's the fundamentals of football. Kids in year three telling a professional footballer he's a prick. Personally though, I love the celebration. It's a shit housery award for Trent. It was a little bit too early in the afternoon, truthfully, for Peter Drury's poetry. I woke up 15 minutes ago, mate. I don't know what a perspicacious is. Diogo Jota prepared for the clash by losing 3 to an ultimate team at 11 p.m. the night before. Meanwhile, at the end of the game, there was an injury scare for goalkeeper Allison. I swear to God, I will commit acts of terrorism if I see Adrian back on the pitch at the end of the game. And Darwin Nunez wasn't too pleased with Pep Guardiola. I didn't call him Baldy Baldy. Maybe he was sticking up for his teammate after Pep's pronunciation. Zvolajai didn't really go down too well with Dominic. Off the pitch, so, and Liverpool players were trying to convince one man that he needed to buy donuts off them. Eight or five. <laughs> yes, no. So or what? 38. Yes, but listen, listen, listen. So this right is, look at only this one guys. number no, no, in no, two no, donuts. You're no, big no, like no, me. No, no. You need to eat uh, like me. You've this already before. Yes, yes, okay, okay. Look, 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 look. It doesn't work anymore. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, okay, okay. So you want it's your turn now. It's your turn now. What have you got to offer? What's he just got scared of Ibrahim Akanate and that's okay. The man's the height of a semi-detached house. He's a convincing man. He could sell me my own flat. But honestly, lovely to see Gravenberg, Zabojlai and Kanate just acting like normal humans, being sound. Chelsea were back to their usual ways after being peppered 4-1 by Newcastle. Thiago Silva put himself into a rinse cycle, something that Anthony Gordon firmly enjoyed. He must have put his pelvis out though at this point, the 39-year-old, as he then made a horror error for Newcastle's third through Joe Linton. He was left to watch on as the Brazilian galloped through on goal and has a tough conversation coming up with Maurizio Pochettino from his Zimmer frame. Maurizio, I can't, I can't move it, move it anymore. Arsenal scraped a Premier League win versus Brentford thanks to super sub Kai Havertz. He is eating good this week after goals in two separate games. Aaron Ramsdale though, not so much as he made a mistake early on here playing out from the back and was bailed out by Declan Rice on the line. Aaron's going to be looking very lovable next time he sees Rice. Honestly, truthfully, he was probably distracted as Mbermo took the strike. Brentford were chatting England's number four at him and poor Aaron, look, listen, he was he was trying so hard, but unfortunately his focus will turn to karate chopping members of the crowd after going 37 seconds of full concentration. Neil Mopé came off the bench in this one and his task was clear. Having left the club a while ago, Burn Leno will have been confused, getting a tweet from Neil trying to distract him. I'm like, what did he say fuck me for? Meanwhile, in training for Arsenal and Mikel Arteta 
Oda might well need to jump back into the Gunners midfield after this piece of skill on Martin Odegaard. Now, there's the news this week that the governing bodies of football are wanting to trial orange cards, which would see players removed from the pitch and placed in a sin bin for 10 minutes based on tactical fouls, for example. I mean, I don't know how I feel about this. Imagine Aaron Ramsdale attempting to sit still for like 10 minutes at a time. Rodrigo De Paul, he's forcing himself out of that box after three minutes away from Lionel Messi. Meanwhile, where's Luton Town sin bin going to be? That's just going to be the spare bedroom. Wolves were once again the victims of shocking VAR decisions after they lost 3-2 to Fulham due to a last minute penalty. Very weird club for the PGMOL to have an agenda against, not going to lie. The worst part of all of this though, Wolves players hearing Alex Iwobi connect to the Bluetooth speaker to celebrate the victory. I make her temple run as she called me a little candy crush. Just kill me off, honestly. Sergio Aguero was spotted at the final F1 race of the season in Abu Dhabi, dressed in a special custom made Manchester City race suit. I hate it, but I like the effort, you know, on it, at this point, Williams would probably take him on and put him in a seat. Aguero! Brighton defender Joel Veltman had to ask for his shirt back from the crowd after realising it had his GPS tracker in it. Meanwhile in the championship and Jamie Vardy's back to his good old ways, punching himself in the face after missing a glorious opportunity. Get him on the Misfits card against himself. Meanwhile on European duty and Scottish side Celtic have made history, going 15 consecutive games in the competition without a win. Jesus! Now, over in Italy, and youngster Francesco Camada made his debut for Milan. The crazy thing here is, he's 15 years old. Now, you might know Francesco for having scored 483 goals in just 87 games. Well, he's made it all the way through the ranks to make his Serie A debut. Imagine being an old Italian defender, finding out the ages of Milan's bench. 16? 15, 16, 16, 16. This kid must have been born in like 2008. That genuinely makes me feel like I'm 84 years old. On the other side of Milan, Inter brought out an incredible comeback to draw 3-3 with Benfica in the Champions League. Joao Mario got a hat-trick for Benfica, but threw his match ball away after the capitulation. Meanwhile, a Juventus fan held up a Rodri Manchester City shirt inside the Alliance, holding it up at Inter fans because Rodri snatched the Champions League final away from them last season. Shit, how's Award confirmed. Mauricio Sari was asked whether he would go and manage in Saudi Arabia. He said he wouldn't mind, but it would depend whether he'd be allowed to smoke there. This man is just a gift that keeps on giving. He'll be walking out of the Al Jayed Stadium when he realizes there's no Marlboro Reds in there. Imagine Paul Sadio Mane when his pre match diet consists of six cigarettes and an elf bar with Sari as boss. Elsewhere, though, there were concerning scenes involving Mario Balotelli, who was involved in a car crash this week. Thankfully, he is all right, was able to walk away. Mario please just go like two weeks without any sort of chaos. Meanwhile, in Spain and Joao Cancelo looked uh, awake during his most recent goal celebration. He's done it again. <laughs> Robert Lewandowski was manhandled this week with some unconventional defending. He's had that coming for a while, to be honest, with the new TikToks. The VAR room for this one looking very suspicious indeed. Pedri met TikToker Iran Ferreira this week, and it was him getting the TikToker's autograph. What world are we living in right now? I love it. Real Madrid beat Cadiz this week in La Liga, and the two sides might separate Nacho Fernandez and Alex Fernandez, but they're still brothers at the end of the day. And there was this wholesome clip at the end of the 90 minutes of them discussing the match with their kids. Wholesome's not something you associate with Sergio Ramos though. He was given a second yellow card for a wild challenge and given his marching orders. He, however, disagreed and told the referee to go and check the VAR monitor, only for him to do that, call him back on the pitch and give him a straight red card instead of a second yellow. I'm starting to understand why he was crying when he joined Sevilla. In the Champions League, Atletico Madrid were helped drastically by two Feyenoord own goals. Diego Simeone was gutted realising he didn't have to shit house his way to victory this time. And in that game, youngster and Atleti youth product Rodrigo Raquelme was given man of the match, not that he could believe it. Para mí es especial porque he estado mucho tiempo peleando por por poder jugar aquí en el Atlético de Madrid, en el en el club de mi vida y nunca pensé que que pudiera pues ganar un MVP del partido en la Champions League en una para mí esto es una una pasada. <laughs> now, the Met Police put out a request this week saying they're looking for a criminal. And I can't lie, he reminds me of somebody. Harold Kane, what have you done, sunshine? I mean, there can't be a weapon. There can't be a knife on him, for example. The guy has no silverware. This will be the Harry Kane that's starting the next Bundesliga <laughs> match for Bayern. Meanwhile, it's time for Operation Prison Break, as he could be seen crawling out of the cell in an unsuccessful heist after his arrest. Meanwhile, Germany's under-17s made it through to the final.
final of their World Cup and celebrated by playing Waka Waka in the changing rooms. Good music taste, they're going far. Back in the Bundesliga though, and referee Felix Breisch is out for the season with an ACL injury. I don't think I've ever heard of this before. The referee has done up his knee. This was during Frankfurt v Stuttgart. This ACL epidemic's so bad, I wouldn't be surprised if I saw the physios going down. Oh God, my knee. Right, have we got a backup physio or anything? Or... Over in France, and shout out to Ellie Carpenter, who at Lyon has taken the time to actually learn the language and speak French in interviews. Mais la performance je pense on f on besoin de faire beaucoup mieux prochaine fois but uh, le clean sheet. But le clean sheet. Hi, listen, Ellie, you're not fooling anybody. Speaking of Leon and for the men's team, Fabio Grosso has been sacked as their manager after just two and a half months in charge. Two and a half months? You weren't boss. You were a caretaker, bro. But the French starlet Hatem Ben Arfa has decided to take up a change of career and is now a tournament-winning paddle tennis player. His opponents are going to be left frustrated when he brings out a rainbow flick in the semi-final. Meanwhile, Andre Ayou has joined French side Le Havre on a free transfer and was anticipating ahead of his debut, in which he got sent off just two minutes after coming off the bench. From the lows to the highs, though, now, it's time for your goals of the week. First of all, we've got an outrageous strike coming from Malaysia. The ball headed out from a free kick and returned with interest. Oh, is that too much of if you thought that strike was fierce, and then we head over to Georgia, where at Batumi, one player has seen a goalkeeper off his line and thundered it from halfway. You guys know where this goes by now. And finally, we got a goal that genuinely might challenge Alejandro Garnacho's bicycle kick for the Pushkas Award 2023. As Kipre Jr. over in the Tanzanian League for Azam FC goes on an incredible, incredible solo run before looping it over the goalkeeper from out wide. The thing is, because of the solo run beforehand, I genuinely think this was on purpose. And if so, this is one of the greatest goals we've seen on the show. Hello all, and welcome to the beautiful game. The segment where we take a look at the poetic and brilliant side of the game that we love. We are back by popular demand for yet more glorious beauty. <laughs> Hell, man. And that concludes the beautiful game. Now over in Saudi Arabia and there's the news that Cristiano Ronaldo could be getting hit with a lawsuit after selling and promoting a collection of NFTs through Binance. I guess it's a different kind of sue he's going to be involved in now. <laughs> Sir, please sit down, you're 39. But fair play to him because out on the pitch and he went down like slightly too easily in a Saudi Pro League match and was given a penalty. He decided though he wasn't worthy of said pen and waved it away on the referee's behalf in an act of fair play, which I rate extremely highly to be fair to the guy. Former Arsenal and Chelsea goalkeeper Petr Cech made his debut this week. If you're raising your eyebrows at him making a debut, it's because he swapped the ball for the puck and has now made his first appearance in a top flight ice hockey match. Coming off the bench, making a Six save and helping his side to a 5 1 win. Do you reckon he still wears the rugby cap like underneath the over in Brazil? And John Kennedy whipped out a new celebration. You might be wondering why he's lying down with his hands on his head. It's because he's imitating fellow Brazilian Fred, who was robbed earlier on in the week, and a picture was released of him in that position. That is mental, mate. This guy's a victim of a crime. That is the ultimate shousery award. <laughs> Play the game. Now last week I brought you the story of FC Zurich, not Grasshopper, sorry, who'd accidentally spelt come on wrong in their TIFO. Well they acknowledged it and decided to bring a brand new one this week, fair play to the fans. Corinthians women's team have got a sensational celebration after winning some silverware this week. Meanwhile the weather has been turbulent all across the world. Firstly in Serbia where a snowstorm caused havoc. Playing through this however is probably the most Serbian thing you could do. In Bulgaria and don't let the weather get you down, this is an opportunity for a new celebration. Meanwhile it was no more destructive than at HJK, where temperatures got so cold the referee had to shortly abandon the game against Aberdeen so that a tractor could come on the pitch and get rid of the snow. That didn't stop the fans though from throwing snowballs at an opponent's goalkeeper. Someone needed to have similar thoughts though in Norway, where at Bryn's promotion game versus IK Star, the groundsman forgot to put the undersoil heating on, meaning the game couldn't take place, a forfeit loss for Star, and apparently the groundsman potentially losing his job. Now though it's time for the moment you've all been waiting for 
war is over in Romania. It's a similar theme, ladies and gentlemen. This weather has been crazy. And sometimes when a match is getting a little bit crazy, you've got to just chill out. And you can't really chill out much more in a football match than having a sit down in the snow with your pal. This league is so unserious. I love it. Closer to home and at Rotherham, I don't even care about what this man's saying in an interview. This is the brother that invented Kentucky Fried Chicken. This is the Bradford bargain bucket. Meanwhile, at Wickham and one goalkeeper took just a little bit too long to pick up the ball when being confronted by this Barnsley striker. A little bit of a nudge. He goes down. He drops the ball. He drops the ball and Sam Cross... What a save! In Croatia now and at Varazdin, we have the first of a long line of incredible own goals. But this one, a basically a diving header, is truly special. A different kind of special. I mentioned own goals because there's even more coming this time in India. We're a breakdown in communication and a back pass. I mean, we've seen it many a time before. In Japan, though, and this goalkeeper's unlocked an entirely new throw technique. And a man that's unlocked an entirely new goal scoring technique here is throwing it back. Monta. New types of goals, new types of goalkeepers. How about a new type of sport? As these lot are braving their ankles to play high heel football. Put Jack Wilshire in this division and he's got no legs left by the end of the first half. In Angola and the street football there is truly taking the piss. Okay. Hey! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Again. Meanwhile, elsewhere in Africa and in Ethiopia, we've all learned from the back pass a second ago. Let's all just stay calm. And that is one of the great goals. Meanwhile, in Ecuador. So I mean, come on, that's got to be a red. There's an off the ball incident, lad. Now that it's time for still nil nil and you guys know the score by now, this is the segment of the show where I bring you the best of Sunday League and amateur football. And we have seen some sensational goals so far in this episode. But this might well be the best of the lot. As we head down to the seventh division of Welsh football, a goalkeeper thinks he's safe playing the ball out long outside of his area, only to be punished in the most satisfying way. On to the weird stuff though now. First of all, over in Georgia where FC Shakura are in the bin. They're really struggling at the moment. I don't know whether it's financial, whether it's because their players just aren't good enough right now. But if you think it's bad being a Southampton fan losing 9-0, FC Shakura have gone even bigger and better with back-to-back 9-0 -back defeats. FC Shakura, it turns out the hips do lie. But finally, and there's the story of a Latvian club that's been bought by a group of TikTokers. FC Saldus, who are based in the small city in Latvia by the name of Saldus, are playing in the second division and they've been bought by a group of tiktokers renamed and rebranded with a potential relocation 100 kilometers away there's still some confusion as to whether the club's actually going to be relocated but it is crazy that a group of social media influencers can buy an entire football club that though is going to wrap up football this week and i hope you have enjoyed it if you have feel free to slap a like on the video and subscribe if you're new to the channel you can also follow me on social media it is at the official fng on twitter and on insta but it's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today have a wonderful day enjoy yourselves and goodbye.